Fishy folks and happy Fry Fry Friday. Today, really something special. I'm not just saying it because I'm in it. My buddy Scott and Chris and I have started a new series, uh, Breakfast with Three Fish Guys. And basically we asked you guys for questions and Scott and I answered them and Chris asked them because Chris is like the, the uh, unadulterated version of the group in the fish world. If you know what I mean, I think you know what I mean. Anyway, guys, grab a big snack and a beverage because this is a long one. This is part one. Scott will have part two, hopefully on Sunday. Um, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Guys, don't forget, hit that sub button for me. Obliterate the sub button for King and Queen Cichlids. Uh, check out kingandqueencichlids.com, michaelsfishing.com. Chris has nothing right now, but, you know, we'll get into that later. All right, guys, here it is. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'm, t I don't know if you can tell, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I mean, it is food and fish, two of my favorite things. So, yeah. Beverage, snack, standby. <laughs> Maybe that's why the board went bad the last time. I mean, that is true. All right, we're, we're, uh, we're doing this. All right. Well, hi, guys. It's Scott from King Queen Cichlids. Mike from Michael's Fish Room. Damn, I just stepped over. <laughs> how about we, how about we, we right. do this again? All right. We'll, we'll just go this way. All right. All right. Hi, guys. It's Scott from King Queen Cichlids. All right, it's Chris. Hey, it's Mike from Michael's Fish Room. And we are bringing you breakfast with three average fish guys. Hope you guys are ready for it. Average? I don't, I don't think I've reached average yet. I'm slightly below. I, yeah, average. I'm slightly below. Too. Wait, I think... wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to do something first. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you see, I've already put the two tons of hairspray on there already <laughs> and stuff. So, uh, anyway, we definitely want to shout out Super Cichlids, our sponsor for the day, our sponsor for our show is Super Cichlids, your one stop for everything aquatic online shop. Got anything to say about Super Cichlids? You know, I love Martin and Lisa to pieces. They are awesome. Their customer service is the best, hands down. Um, and I talk about them quite a bit because I believe in what they're doing. Their prices are great, their service is great, their products are great. Plus the Swiss fish that they give you. Swedish fish that they give you. Gotta love them. What kind of fish? Swedish. Yeah, <laughs> love them Swedish fish. I can't wait for the store to come out. Yeah, uh, if you guys don't know, they're building a, a storefront and it's been a long, tedious process. And they're doing all the work themselves. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Yep. All right, guys, it's time to go get our plates. You guys ready? You guys should go get a snack and a beverage and stand by. And I'm going to tell them to hit the subscribe button for Michael's Fish Room, King and Queen Cichlids, and uh, what, how do you say it? Gently, uh, gently boop, boop, the notification bell for both our channels. Chris doesn't have a channel. He's just here for mental support because he's like the smartest guy in the room. So. Well, Chris is our unsoiled, unbiased, just fresh into the hobby uh, perspective, which is something I think both Mike and I need. We're kind of been in the hobby for a while. We're a little used, abused, and uh... <laughs> I don't know about a little anything. But, <laughs> you know. but it's nice to have a perspective from someone that's just new into the hobby. So that's Chris. He's actually thinking about at some point make, doing your own store, right? Yes. yes. So uh, definitely good to have him here. Plus, we need somebody to read the questions out to us. So, you know, yeah, free breakfast for him. Because <laughs> Scott and I can't read. So. <laughs> well, we can read. We just don't want to put our forks down to read. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. All right, guys. Go get a snack, a beverage in the comments. Let us know what it is because, you know, I always have to find out about food because I'm a fat guy who likes talking about food. Me too. I'm getting there. Food I'm there. Like food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What should they do now? Uh, I don't know. Stand by. Well, we're back. I got a bacon and Swiss omelet with onions. Oh, delicious. Some marble rye, because marble rye is the Yeah. Mike, wait a minute. We got to tell you guys where we're at. We are at Cheers American Bistro in Reading, Pennsylvania. It is in the Double Tree Hotel Room. And it's pretty damn nice. It's pretty damn nice. And they were nice enough to let us have kind of our own table. 
with all our equipment and crap in here. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Either they want to put us way off to the side where no one can see us. <laughs> well, there are two big guys here, so they probably want us as far away from the buffet as they could. <laughs> I gotta get my steps in. It's <laughs> a good way to think about it. But anyway, go back, Mike. I just want to make sure we shout it out to this place because they were really nice and cordial to us. Yeah, Scott is our social secretary. He made all the arrangements. I'm just a good looking talent. He yeah. shows up and answers questions. <laughs> just here for the food. That's a true story, too. I do everything. Mike just shows up looking good, relaxed, you know. So, uh, bacon, Swiss, and uh, onion omelet. I got some marble rye, of course, bacon, because I love bacon. Mm -hmm. Only half of it made it to the table. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. forget the sausage links. Mm. But it's chicken sausage. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Oh. It's ruined it. Did you just try it? Healthy. No, not yet. So I got the omelet with everything on it, and I tell you guys, for $15, it's probably the best breakfast you can get around town. So, uh, good stuff. All right, so, let's see what we got. Swiss cheese, baby. Mmm. What's your favorite yeah. breakfast food? Swiss cheese? Uh, cheese in your omelet? Cheese? For <laughs> three? <laughs> what's my favorite breakfast? We got questions, but what's my favorite breakfast food? Yeah. I like waffles. Waffles with some strawberries on it and some syrup. Mm -hmm. Why do people have to ruin food with like fruit? Well, it makes me feel better about all the calories. I'm <laughs> about all the syrup and whipped cream and sprinkles on top. Oh yeah, yeah. That's 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 the way to go. We all got the post, all the YouTubers got this post that YouTube is going to be cleaning up all the non-active and closed subscriptions and possibly illegal subscriptions. So that happened December 13th to the 14th. I actually lost about seven or eight uh, subscribers. But thanks to you guys, I ended up getting about 10 more. So just interested to see how many people were affected by that, that process that went through. I think I lost like 30. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, you got 12,000 subscribers. Yeah, so. Less than what? Whatever. Um, what's happening with me and YouTube? I had a situation, and I didn't know how I was supposed to, if I should respond, if I should leave it alone. KG Tropicals, who is a good guy. I mean, he shouted me out in a couple of his live videos, telling me, saying that I was up and coming channel to check me out. I have to interrupt you, I'm sorry. The chicken sausage, not, not bad. Not so good? Not bad, no, not bad. Okay. Oh, not bad? No, not bad. bad. Let me definitely check no. that out. No. So, he is a big uh, helper for what we call Team Green Alliance. And uh, so I was checking out a video of his, I'm trying to be a little more proactive and be in the live chats. And I heard him talking about a particular store. I didn't even realize he was so close. He actually lives in the Virginia area, Washington area. And he went to one of the stores uh, that I had gone to. And he said when he went in there, he started to take footage. And the owner came scrambling out saying, hey, why are you taking footage? And apparently, KG Tropical said the owner had had a bad experience with some YouTubers coming into the store and posting bad stuff about them. Well. Now, I was one of those YouTubers, and my video is still up. I've been to that store twice, and I just want to, I, I love KG Tropicals, uh, KG's Tropicals. I'm probably going to try to contact him, I'm not sure at this point, just to tell him, hey, when I was in there, this is why I did the video that I did. Uh, he said his experience there was good, so. What was wrong when you were there? What, what happened? The fish didn't seem like they were taken very well care of. Let, let me tell you the whole story. The store used to be in, in a mall, and they were shut down after five or six, probably ten years. Mm, excuse me, chicken uh, sausage because of the uh, clean un uncleanness of the store because of the fish smell of dead fish. Uh, so people actually came in there and shut them down. So they got a new place in a new location. So I decided to check that out after already putting one bad video about the, my experience there. And about six of us went down there, and it wasn't any better. So you were at the store in the mall that was shut down. Yep. And then you went to the new store hoping for the best. Yes, absolutely. And when I got there, it was better, but it still smelled of uh, dead fish. There were still fish that did not look the best. And a lot of the tanks didn't even have prices on them. That's one of my big things. I hate to go to fish stores where there's not a price. 
on tanks, so I have to go walking around and find the person to tell me how much the fish are worth. But uh, there's some spectacular cichlids, like the kind I keep in there, but you never know what the prices are, and depending on how the owner feels that day, just based on what the price is. So anyway, I just, when KG Tropicals was saying that, I was like, oh crap, he's talking about me, probably in my videos. So uh, anyway, if you see this KG Tropicals, I'm going to reach out to you or reach out to me. Love to sit down and talk about it. And I'm glad to hear that your experience was better than mine. That's all I got. All right. You ready to start with some questions? Yeah, let's, let's do this. Are all you right. Ready to start answer, or asking questions. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we already bacon. said Super Cichlids was our sponsors. Thank you so much, Super Cichlids. We love you guys. And so I have cut up all the questions, put them in here randomly. He's so awesome. And just pull them out and read one, and all right. we'll leave the floor to Mike first. First question from Mike. Uh, can you guys hear? I hope you can hear, Chris. <laughs> it would have been smart if we checked that. Yeah, it would have been. Okay. How do you choose a filter to go with a tank setup? Oh, this sorry. question is from Matt Quinn, who we saw speak at CCY recently. Yep. Well, Matt. <laughs> Ooh, enough of my juice. Ooh, in your juice. I um, I use all sponge filters or box filters, pretty much, because I'm cheap and they're easy in the fish room, easy to maintain, easy to run, cheap to run. Even in the one show tank in the house, I have sponge filters. <clears throat> I do have a couple hang on backs that I recently bought um, for two reasons. One, to make videos on, because I need content. And two, because <laughs> I can use them to help clean up some of the uh, detritus and some of the pucko tanks. Because you know, puckos are a mess. So that's really not a good question for me, because I only use sponges or uh, box filters. You recently did a video on uh, Hang on the Backs. I did. Good. How to I did. supercharge it. Yeah, you know, a couple of videos out there on how to supercharge your hot rod or your filter. I just put my spin on it, maybe a little comedy, you know. So, I'm into aquascaping. I like to, you like this one out on your thing. <laughs> I'm into aquascaping, so I like to really make my tanks look good. Uh, with the big fish that I have, that's not easy. I can't put plants and stuff like that in there. But I like to have as much of the tank as possible to decorate and really make my tanks look like it came out of the river. But that said, I really enjoy using canister filters. Uh, I like that the chamber is outside of the tank, giving me more space in the tank. Uh, I usually try to turn over the water two to three times more than what the tank actually is. However, I have recently gotten re very lazy. And if you don't see the canister filter like every day, you tend to forget about it. And I had uh, on my peacock bass tank, I couldn't bass tank, I couldn't figure out why I had this huge ammonia spike. And I'm gonna shout out to Callie Parker, uh, by the way, from API. Great girl. You've done a video with her before. Too. Yeah, it's nice to have a friend that actually works at one of these companies that you can call up and say, hey, I have this problem, help me out. Actually found out that uh, <laughs> my canister filters were just crap. Actually found a dead fish in one of them, a small dead fish in one of them that was causing the water to spike up. So I told, told, tore all my canister filters out and I've replaced them with sponge filters, believe it or not. Really? Yes, I have. So that's another video coming real soon. Now I still have some hang on the back because I like to have that chemical filtration and put some, you know, water application. Yeah, I, I like to have some bio, some chemical filtration with some charcoal or carbon uh, or anything to just make the, the water look crystal clear. But I've gone to sponge filters simply because I'm lazy and those canister filters are underneath the tank and I tend to forget about cleaning them. So. Plus we got that real cool uh, unit that kind of, you can have, my entire room now is being pushed by one air power, what do you call those things? Air pump. Pump, thank you. Pump. pump. That's running most of the sponge filters in my fish room. Next question. Unless you had some, Chris. What are you as a average tank 
I have a them. mix because I, I have some smaller tanks like Mike and I have some bigger tanks like you. So I do have some canisters uh, that I've used from the beginning, but I do have hang on the backs on those. And I have sponge and box filters. Um, one of Mike's videos said it was about box filters and I bought a large quantity of them at a yard sale and I use them in my copies and uh, mollies and stuff like that. My small tanks and my shrimp. I just found like a bag of like 10 box filters in my fish room because you know how neat and tidy the fish room is. <laughs> yeah. And so I was kind of, I was, I want to say I was cleaning up, but I wasn't. I was looking for something. And uh, yeah, I found these box filters. So I have a bunch extra. The boxes are cheap and easy. Like you get the poly fill. Just like me. <laughs> and the uh, story. And... <laughs> Next question. All right. How many generations does it take to get an 80%? Three true guppies from Barbara Jacks. That's got to be for Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, Barbara, I saw this question. I was like, I got to research that so I can look smart. <laughs> but then you all would know. I have no idea. I'm just a dumb guy with a camera and a good-looking head. I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure either. I've only actually brought a few guppies for my daughter, and the only ones I've actually gotten the breed true are Moscow guppies that I've gotten from Mike. What I can do is ask my cichlids that eat the guppies what they think is best as far as, you know, what tastes what better. Tastes pure. Eighty yeah. percent, yeah. Or if there's actually a difference at all to them. But, uh... Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Next Come question. On. I probably just offended your whole guppy society now. Sorry, guys. All right. So, if you had a major tragedy in the fish room, what made you keep going and continue in the hobby? From one of my friends, Kyle Mumper. Kyle from uh, Fish Coliseum. Coliseum. Fish Coliseum. If you're looking for plecos, definitely check him out. That's you first, buddy. I'm no, first. Go with you first. Say it again. If I had a oh, tragedy, man. what kept me going? If you had a major we tragedy, are good. this is Bree, friend. by the way. Bree, say Bree hi. Is, hi. 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 Hello. <laughs> what kept me going? Um, and continue in the hobby. You actually. I had a little tragedy. I, I, 2018 was a bad year for me. I've actually lost some of my better fish uh, I had for years. I mean, some of the fish, yeah. Ten, if you have fish for eight or nine or ten years, unfortunately, days coming where they're going to pass. So, this was my year to lose two of my. He's fine, stand by. This is my year to lose a couple of really good fish. It hurt. Uh, but. I just love this hobby. I'm passionate about it. I, I think I really cried. I'll be honest with you. I cried uh, when my big fish dinner plate by Fisiatis passed away. Um, but I love the hobby. I love the people. I love doing stuff like this. And I didn't let it hold me down too, too long. Um, you just have to realize that sometimes things are going to happen in this hobby. and. You gotta keep your head over water. That's about all I got. Well, I've only had one real tragedy, and I, I, think I might have talked about it once or twice. <laughs> I mean, you know, I lose guppies. It happens. You lose guppies. I've, I've made a couple of dumb mistakes where I lost whole tanks um, of guppies, and I've lost guppies, and I don't know why. But I had discus about eight years ago. I had discus in the family room. It was a planted. Uh, discus tank and I was just starting out with the discus I had them for about six months I always wanted them and all of a sudden one got sick and within I don't know 24 48 hours he died I was pretty bummed uh, the other discus in the tank uh, <clears throat> also died within a, a couple days and uh, it was before Luke was born and, and I decided to take the tank down. We had to take the tank down anyway to uh, work on the floor, but I wasn't putting the tank back up. And I was really upset because I had always wanted discus. And when I lost them and I didn't know why, uh, it was pretty, I was pretty bummed out. So I took the tank down, put it in the garage, and that's where it stayed for like six years. And then, uh, you know, I, I got started about two and a half years ago with the fish room now, and that was one of the first tanks I brought down to the basement. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. What do you got next there, buddy? What are you pulling these out of your underwear? How, where are these coming from? <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> it's like, okay, your favorite YouTube oh, channel. Excluding your own two. Callie Parker. Callie! Alright, Callie. Um, 
I've said this before, I say it many times, I don't watch too much uh, YouTube when it comes to fish channels. Recently I've been watching uh, Adam Savage rebuild Nerf guns because Luke is real into Nerf guns and uh, we, we watch them together and it's really cool. But as far as fish tubers, I mean I watch Scott, I watch Graham from Aquarium Adventures. I said um, one, buddy. Stop, stop trying to be politically correct. I watch others as well, but my favorite—I don't know. I like I like Graham from Aquarium Adventures because he and I do kind of the same thing. We turn the camera on and talk, and that's kind of what You're I good. like. You, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was talking to Bree. How about you? I did see the question beforehand. I think hands down, I love watching Sean Peck Tech. I just, his level of videos is far beyond, in my opinion, everyone else. I love how he edits. I just love the experience, just being in his fish room and watching what he does. It's very, very good. So, easy one for me is Sean Peck Tech. Definitely check him out. Uh, just a great guy, great channel. Coming from the underwear, what do we have now? <laughs> what kind of music does Michael? We all know Scott loves the Prince. All the questions are from Mike. Haas. Why don't you all like me? Why is everything I got on Mike? <laughs> well, you know. Mike's the man of mystery. Well, Karen, I like a plethora of different types of music. Ooh, big well, word. Wanting to explain that word to you? No. no, I know. no. <laughs> so, uh, I do. I listen to all kinds of different music. As a matter of fact, this week I was listening to a lot of 80s rap, you know, like Third Bass and EPMD, Eric B and Rakim and that kind of stuff. But on the, on the way out here, I was listening to Bruce Springsteen live on Broadway because uh, I'm a big Bruce fan. I like hearing him talk and uh, I like hearing him tell the stories. So I do listen to a wide variety of music. I have classical on my you know, in my iTunes, I have rap, I have rock, I have everything, so. That's, that's the music for me. Everyone knows, it wasn't for me, so I don't have the answer. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Are there any Africans that, African cichlids that won't eat or uproot plants? Barbara Jackson. Ooh. Out of the three of us, you're probably the better, <laughs> the African cichlid yeah, um, expert, even though I'm called King Queen Cichlids. Uh, I'll take this one real quick. I don't think that there's any... Three different places. I don't to begin with. I don't think that there's any. It's live TV, guys. You never know what's going to happen. I wanted to hear what happened. <laughs> it's interesting. With African cichlids, I don't think there's any African cichlid you can put in and definitely say this fish is not going to uproot or try to eat on your plants. So that's my philosophy. Chris, you keep African cichlids. What's your thoughts? Um, I, I did keep a lot of Africans in the beginning and I tried to keep plants and I brooded on with, with the Africans and found out quickly that they do eat or dig up the plants and it's just, I don't believe there's any that you can keep with, with plants successful. I'm sure there are out there because I've seen people keep Africans with American cichlids and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. So, so, so I just want to add, I know nothing about cichlids, but when it comes to keeping fish, if it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean it's not going to work for someone else. So there might be fish keepers out there that have successfully kept some plants with African cichlids and all that stuff. So the, a rule of thumb could be you shouldn't, you can't keep plants with African cichlids. But you know, for the ten people out there that have successfully done it, congrats, you're awesome. And if you want to go down this route, let me suggest three different plants: Anubis, which is one of the hardiest plants you're ever going to get; Java fern and Java moss. Those would be the three that I would start. Uh, in an African tank, they can stand the pH, they can stand the hardness of the water. Those would be what I would recommend for your fish tanks if you really want plants in there. What do you got next, buddy? Are you ready for another plate? Uh, yeah, let's, let's, we're going to go, out. we're going to take a break and uh, you guys stand by. We'll be right back. Hell yeah. Good luck. Yeah. 
people want to wait for him or go. <laughs> well, we could eat and film while we eat, so I went up and got some oh. sausage and gravy. Are you on my, are you recording? Um, of course I'm recording. Oh, my. my bad, I, I didn't turn his 1972 recording. camera off. <laughs> and I, I went healthy. I got the croissant with the raspberry and cheese in it. So raspberry makes it great, right. thank you. How is he explaining his food? I was, yeah, I got the raspberry <laughs> croissant. No. Fish stores. But we're fat guys who like to eat, so. So I have to show that I actually, because Liz has been getting on me about my diet and the food I'm eating. See, honey, I got pancakes and syrup, but I do actually do have some strawberries in there with some melon and some cantaloupe. So I'm trying to follow what you say, honey. Love you, miss you. <laughs> I love you too, Liz. I miss you too. Oh, my God. Yeah, next time we'll, that phone call, we, we got to make it longer. <laughs> As long as it's a phone call, I'm all right with it. <laughs> <sighs> so what's going on in your fish room? Oh, your vi latest video is doing pretty good. Yesterday's? Yeah. Yeah. It was over 1.1 uh, thousand when I saw it. What's it about? <laughs> the food, all the food oh, that you oh, had. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to tell you about your own video. I forgot. <laughs> Dude, I'm old. I don't remember anything. How do you put out so many videos? Where, how, how do you do it? I don't edit. Like, if I spend an hour editing, it's a lot. You probably spend 15 hours. Exactly, and that's that's my problem. I can't ever get my videos to where I want them. And as I'm creating them, I'm thinking about more ideas and I'm adding crap to it. And it shows, because his videos are, are pretty nice. My videos suck. I don't know why you guys even watch them. Well, maybe just to see this. Well, let's be honest. We watch Mike because your personality, you're sharp, you're quick. You're, you're entertaining just watching you, where I feel like I have to come up with stuff and, and, and throw tricks in to try to make sure my video stays entertaining uh, all the way through. So, kudos to you, my friend. Well, thank you, thank you. I think I, last time I checked, my video was at 783 views. You wanna check look. it out? Which, yeah, look. which video, the one yesterday? Yeah, the what one on reintroducing King and Queen Cichlids. Oh. We are King and Queen Cichlids. Don't get it twisted, because I see a lot of people coming out with the name King now. We even explained why we're King and Queen Cichlids. Oh, our host is back. Uh, stand by. King and Queen Cichlids. You already got me. Oh. So, your video yesterday... That can't be right. What does it say? Oh, 748. At first it said 213. I'm like, no. 748. 748 must have been 12 hours, something like that. Alright, let's look at mine. I'm a small channel, guys. Hit that subscribe button, please. <laughs> So my video yesterday was released at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. 1,296. Wow. Yeah. It's not really accurate because I watched it twice. <laughs> I don't think it counts that twice, does it? If you watch a video twice, it only counts once. Hey, so I, I want to talk about the first comment from Philly Man Pete. Dude, you just pimp stuff. He used a different word, but you know. Or what? I know you're tied into super sickness and basically you pimped all their stuff. Oh, Candidly, very off-putting. Well, I mean, I'm just being transparent. I love them, and I do buy all my stuff there, and they do give me lots of stuff. And, uh, great I mean, prices and great deals. Right. When I do buy stuff, they give me great deals, but they take care of everyone in the hobby. They donate so much to so many clubs. They're smart. Like, I have questions about food, and I ask Lisa because she knows her stuff. Yeah. So, anyway. That talk we had back then, she was a part of it because she had taken trips to black fish and black fish and things like that. She was super knowledgeable. I saw that talk at NJ, the Jersey Shore Club. Uh, she did it last year and I saw it. It was it's a good talk. Yeah. yeah. Let's go on. A breakfast related question. All right. Bacon, sausage, or both? Gavin Dalton. One word, buddy. 
Of course he likes the sausage. I like the bacon though. Notice how Mount and Mike's are bigger. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? You wrap this up together because it's set or both. It's probably just as good. So. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I like me a, a nice sausage joint. <laughs> yeah, but but if I had a choice, it would only be bacon. <laughs> Yeah, and I only buy it on sale, so it's okay. All right, so we'll go to the next one. Ooh, it's a long one. Ooh. Have you guys ever had a pH crash after a water change? Oh my gosh. Recently, I did a water change like any other times before with zero problems. I checked all water parameters, ammonia, pH, nitrate, and as usual, the nitrates were high. The second time around, I did, didn't test the water after water change. And I had a drastic pH drop. Could have been bad tap water, just an R Argo. Let me take it. Sure. So, <laughs> speaking of thumbs down, I'm gonna get some thumbs down on this. I have to be 100% transparent. I rarely, if ever, check any of my water parameters. Very rarely. Something has to be drastically wrong. My fish are not moving correctly. They're not eating for me to actually check my water parameters. So. If I've had a crash, I probably don't realize it. I do so many water changes. I, I do water changes two or three times a week, so it's not likely that I have huge water or pH crashes. But uh, I really don't have an answer because I very rarely check check my water parameters unless something's wrong, such as my peacock bass had cloudy eyes and I had to check the water for ammonia. Man, it's getting loud up in here. <laughs> so. I'm the same way. I, I don't even own a API master test kit, you know, the end all to testing your water. I do have some scripts um, that Martin from Super Sickness gave me to try out. And uh, I, don't, I don't test water. I mean, the water company, unless you're on a well, and even then you got to be careful. But the water company does things to water without telling you because it meets whatever standards. So you probably, you may want to be careful. You may want to test beforehand. I don't know what to tell you. Good answer. Stand by for a minute. Ma'am, Bree, how bad would it be if we wanted to go over there since it's getting so loud? Okay, um, let me just get that situated because it's got some stuff I mean, on it. Give me one second. Do you think or you think we're all right? And there is like quiet as hell, but... I mean, if, if it's not too much trouble. Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay. Thank you so much. We're going to change our location because it's getting really loud in here. Which and uh, one of us, I don't want to mention anyone's name, <laughs> is really quiet. So we might mic them up and, and do some other stuff. So stand by. Stand by. <laughs> 